Greetings sailors and welcome to more Le Terrible because I thought it only fair to have some actual gameplay and not just me getting owned by a Harugumo. I stand by everything I said in the first look video. This is an awkward ship. Uh, it has a fairly limited range of uh, best possible circumstances, which basically is you exploiting holes in the enemy lines and there not being any aircraft carriers or radar or anything like that to worry about. But of course you're not going to get those most of the time and so you basically have to make it do. And what I've been trying to do is play a supporting role for other destroyers a bit more, which has worked kind of okay but it obviously then depends on another player not completely derping. And you never quite know what's going to happen, especially in the early match when you just don't know the uh, the, the quality of your fellow teammates because uh, they might turn out to be really good players or they might just derp out and die very, very quickly. So this is good matchmaking. We're starting off with uh, a bit of this match. It's not going to be the whole thing because this one kind of peaked early and the speed didn't really help me out because the circumstances towards of the end of the match just meant that I was hard pressed to get into a position to do any damage and a part of that is the fact that this is a standard game. I'm deliberately heading away from the rest of my team at this point. I know there's a couple of enemy ships coming down here including a destroyer that can definitely outspot me but I'm banking on them still being in their smoke and I'm banking on being able to do something with torpedoes to these enemy ships that are headed this way because the torps on this are one of its stronger points I mean the range isn't great for a tier 8 destroyer it's not terrible it's certainly workable given that the stealth that you have uh, but the main strength of them honestly is the fact that they're reasonably damaging uh, but more than that it's the reload they do have a very quick reload and if you have a set of circumstances where you're not going to get out spotted and there's not radar and uh, you can just make your drops in peace then it's absolutely fine but even then as you can see here to get all of your torpedoes out involves making a rather awkward turn so yes the reload is nice but getting all your torps out is a bit of a lengthy process so as this is top tier, uh, there isn't that much for me to worry about in terms of um, enemy cruisers. There is a Cleveland that I will have to be wary of that we'll see a bit more of later, but the Budioni isn't that much of a threat unless I'm trying to gun them down for full health, but they're not full health. And they're about to take a torpedo, which means actually no, I can now finish them off quite easily. This is worth opening fire for. Even though I know there's some battleships back there, they are far back enough that I'm pretty sure I can dodge them. So this is a, a fairly good set of circumstances right now. And as a bonus, that destroyer's just opened fire at me, so I know exactly where they are. I don't know why this Fubuki decided it would be a good plan to open up at me, but this is absolutely not a fight that's going to go in their favour. So I'm maneuvering around to get a bit closer, trying to keep most of my guns on target because that's one of the awkward things with this ship is it's all single mount guns and it is quite easy to turn such that you've only got, you know, one or two guns able to point at the enemy, at which point your reload booster uh, consumable is uh, it's not really worth using if you've only got one or two guns available. It's one of the many, 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 many awkward things about this ship. So this is great. I've got two battleships to play with now. They know I'm here. But as long as I'm not completely stupid, I should be able to get some torp hits out of this. Although, of course, having said that, it does depend how much they're paying attention, how much they're going to just sail in nice straight lines for me. So initially the Monarch it looked like I might get some hits but uh, no I'm not going to unfortunately. There is also the North Carolina though so I might have slightly better luck with them, we'll see. If these torps had a longer starting range to begin with it might actually be worth having torp acceleration on this and just trying to have the you know the high risk torpedo boat lifestyle but uh, no they'd have to have better starting range to begin with it would not really be worth it otherwise 
because they've got decent concealment and they do, as I've said, hit reasonably hard, but you just need battleships to sail in nice straight lines for you, as with any torpedo uh, destroyer. So uh, in this case, the North Carolina is being much more cooperative, and although the first lot is sailing well in front, the second spread is actually going to uh, finish him off. So that's going to be a nice couple of hits. Not a huge amount of damage. We're now up to 50k, which is not terrible. And at this point, I'm just circling around to try and reacquire the Monarch. I'm about to be in for a nasty little surprise. <laughs> yeah, the Monarch's right there. And although I wasn't initially in, within spotting range, this thing just moves so fast that uh, it didn't take long to get back in spotting range. And initially I thought, okay, I'm going to turn away. I'm going to try and actually... Uh, get unspotted again and then I thought no let's try this let's try rushing down this nearly full health monarch and although I didn't have torps back at the moment when I took that decision I knew they were very close to being back so I decided to go for it and there's a very good chance this monarch is going to be firing all HE so at least I won't have to worry about AP penetrations but yep there we go I did take a significant amount of module damage so that was a bit nasty, but I've got my torps out, and even though I've lost a whole bunch of health, this monarch is about to lose their ship. So that was a highly successful battleship rush. It cost me a lot of health, but it's cost the enemy team a high tier battleship, and the speed really made that a, a lot more of a viable possibility than it would have been in almost any other destroyer in the game. There's still a couple of destroyers where you could have covered that distance quite quickly, but nothing as quick as a Le Terrible with the Sierra Mike and the Speed Boost active. There's just nothing that fast in the game. From there, though, uh, this, this was it, pretty much. That was my damage. I'll get a little bit more out of it, but... Uh, partly I am blocked by this Cleveland who, with, what, four or five enemy ships behind me, I was thinking would die quite quickly. And uh, as you'll see, I'd have been wrong about that. But uh, because it's a Cleveland with radar, I have to be a little more careful because I can try and get closer to drop torps on something that's heading away from me. Yeah, that's not going to work, especially not a, a cruiser. But by the time I've gotten close enough, and I'm trying to disengage, they'll probably have radar ready again. So yeah, I decided I was just going to keep my distance a bit and try and spot. Assuming that this Cleveland would die because there's most of my team behind me at this point. And it, really there only seems to be two of them actually shooting at him though. So yeah, this Cleveland is going to live for a while yet. And because our Cleveland is at this point taking a thorough pummeling, I decided I would actually try and take the pressure off a bit, because that's something you can do in a destroyer if you've got a low health ally nearby. It is surprising how often people will stop firing at the low health ship to try and fire at you in a destroyer instead. There is one thing to note though, I don't have IFHE on this captain, this is only a 10 point captain, which on the Le Terrible, you'll know if you've seen any of the reviews and previews, uh, is is not really adequate. You need at least a 12, 14, 15 point captain and even with a 19 point captain there are a lot of different possibilities that you could go with. There's a lot of different holes to fill with captain points and as I pointed out in my uh, first look video and as Little White Mouse has pointed out and other people have pointed out you can easily fill up a 30 point captain and still have other things that you could usefully spend points on. I think I probably will be trying IFHE though over AFT. AFT is going to be much more useful for tackling battleships but IFHE will give you the possibility to do more against cruisers and I think that's the one that will be most useful. At least that's the one I'm going to try out first. I might swap over to trying AFT at some point but uh, Having both of them, of course, would be a very expensive investment indeed. So the Clevelands managed to run themselves aground. Still alive. Despite the Bismarck, Pensacola, North Carolina and Lyon all being within firing distance. 
I don't know how our Cleveland's managing to stay alive through all this. Uh, that Cleveland's just been, when not firing at me, peppering them. But uh, eventually it's the Pensacola that gets the kill, so uh, there we are. And I've basically skipped ahead to the end of this one, because by the time I got back into range of the remaining enemy ships, hoping to do a little bit more damage, at that point we capped. I could have just gotten in the cap circle and it would have been an even quicker end to that one, but I decided I wanted to try and get a bit more damage out of it, because it's one of those games, especially after rushing down that Monarch, where I thought, wow, that's a really good, you know, that's a good chunk of damage, that's a really good start, surely I can only do better from here, and then as it turned out, the answer was no, I could not, that was it, I peaked pretty early. So that was a top tier game, where the matchmaking was uh, reasonably nice to me and I was able to successfully rush down and eliminate a very high health enemy battleship. I even got one of the new medals out of it which was quite nice, uh, four kills. But still, uh, towards the end of it I still felt like <laughs> I could have gotten a bit more out of it but uh, that would have involved the team not capping. That wasn't really on the ship. That was more the, t uh, the, the team deciding we were going to win that one by cap, when we kind of didn't have to. There's not really a lot you can do about that. Decent profit, as you can see. Um, I did have the Zulu flag on there, which added quite a lot, but still. Uh, for the damage done, that was okay. And, uh, you know, it's a tier 8 premium. If you stack your flags and camos on it, then you'll make a, a, a decent profit. Now we come on to much less kind matchmaking, although this is still not nearly as bad as it could be. We have, I think, the only radar on our team, but there is a tier 10 carrier in play. So this is really going to come down to who has the better tier 10 carrier in terms of whether I spend a lot of time being air spotted or not. So once again, I move forward in support of this lightning, whom I'm hoping will go and contest the cap. I don't know offhand how much better concealment than me they've got, but it's going to be better, crucially. I'm not intending to contest this cap myself, just to support this lightning. The fact that they're pink, though, it's not totally confidence-inspiring. You never know with pink teammates. It could have been a genuine accident, or it could have been a moment of avoidable carelessness, or it could have been deliberate trolling, but it's usually not a great sign, so... We'll see. We'll see how they manage, but let's uh, let's lightning even. You know, it does have hydro, so hopefully they won't just get themselves torpedoed to death in smoke. The enemy team's also got two of their destroyers over here, including one of the tier nines. In fact, that that's the tier ten, the Yue Yang. That's not a nice one we want to see. So, uh, no, it's not. That's the Yugumo. There is a Yue Yang, but it's on the other side. Um, I can tell the difference. They both start with Y. That's my excuse. So I've pinged my uh, reload booster, gotten a good 5k chunk out of that Z23, and they've also lost some health otherwise, but uh, yeah, the Lightning's also lost a fair old whack. Our carrier is doing what they can here though, they are keeping these destroyers lit up, and they've managed to derp a bit when it comes to smoke, so although there is a smoke cloud there, uh, it's not really doing them much good. So. The fighters that our carrier has uh, tasked to uh, help out in this cap have proved to be very useful. And I'll say right now, you know, the reason I'm showing you this is that our carrier didn't suck. Our carrier was actually uh, able to win the air fight with the enemy carrier and uh, therefore I never really had to worry about air control in this one. I never had to worry about being spotted by planes. And you never know in this thing, well in any game when there's, there's carriers in play, especially when you're in a destroyer. There's very few destroyers where actually you can comfortably then do something about it. It's basically the US destroyers, although German destroyers don't have bad AA values either. And of course some of the Japanese destroyers also have good AA values, but it's the American destroyers with their defensive fire consumable that uh, absolutely can just tread enemy planes. So. Those are really the only ones that don't truly have to worry. The others might shoot down some planes over time, but you're going to have to put up with having planes overhead whilst that happens, and it just then depends on how long the enemy carrier is willing to keep those planes over you. 
Now, as I know, the Yugumo is still there. Definitely not a Yui Yang. <laughs> as I know they're still there, I'm not rushing to get in the cap once again. There is a bit of backup here, but the Yamato is behind an island, and the Chapaev and the North Carolina are rather further back. The Rune's the only one that might have shots, although actually the Chapaev could as well. I'm not sure about the North Carolina, given their position. The enemy team has a few ships here as well to worry about, and all the islands that are around actually make this a bit of an awkward environment for manoeuvring. There are a lot of maps that just do not suit Le Tabibla. As I've said, ideally you want maps where enemy teams leave nice big gaps for you to get through and then you can go and chase down carriers or cap undefended cap circles or make surprise torpedo drops from a direction that people aren't expecting, though of course you know the element of surprise only lasts for so long. But that isn't really something I can much do on this map, at least not at the moment. Because our team and the enemy team are both fairly evenly spread at the moment. And so, although I don't necessarily want to be here, I want to be stretching my legs and trying to exploit holes in the enemy lines. Instead, as the enemy only destroyer left on this flank, I felt it was better for the team to try and actually help get this cap. And I'll give this Yugumo credit, he's a persistent bugger, but considering that I'm here, that the Yamato's not backing off, that the carrier is continuing to try and keep him spotted, uh, I, I don't know how persistent I would have been under those circumstances. I might have tried to back off if I were in their position. I mean, I'm being spotted myself as well, and I've lost almost half my health already. But... I'm not the one that has fighters hovering overhead, and it's not like the Yugumo has especially great AA either. So we'll see if my Torps find their mark. Although, if they're a decent player, they have to know that their cloud of smoke makes for a nice big Torp target. Uh, but at that point, I don't know uh, if the Chapayev radared them, or if... Uh, I don't think that smoke would have been going that soon, but for whatever reason they decided to back off out of the smoke and got spotted by the fighters. But at that point, it's so low health that yeah, they're not going to get away from that alive. So I'm trying some shots myself, but it's not that hard to dodge shells from Lutterebler. The ballistics are not great. They really aren't. It's one of the reasons why the reload booster it's a bit of a mixed bag because yeah you can vastly outcrease, uh, outcrease? increase your damage output but you have to be showing a lot of broadside to get all your guns on target and you have to be reasonably close range in order for your shells not to just be easily dodgeable so although yeah it's a nice feature to have on the ship coupled with the guns that it has it's not nearly as effective as it might be a Soviet destroyer with this reload booster might be something nasty to behold. I can't imagine Wargaming doing that. It really does seem like something they put on here to patch up a deficiency. Of course, it might be that as a test bed, and we must not forget that this is at least partly a test bed for what Wargaming wants to do with French destroyers overall, as is Eigler in its own way. Uh, there's a possibility that we might see the reload booster as a common consumable on ordinary French destroyers. Or there's a possibility we might see the regular line not have smoke. And it'll be interesting to see how that might work out because of course they're not all going to be this fast. They're definitely not all going to be this fast. This was one of the, uh, the, uh, the outstanding features of the Fantastique class is that they were very, very fast. So I'll split my drops a bit here, although that first one on the Alabama, that's definitely not going to hit. But having managed to get round the turn, and the drop angles on this are alright, I've got my second one away. And so I'm kind of hoping that the Alabama might go, oh, there are those first one of torps, he's dropped his torps, I don't need to manoeuvre anymore. So we'll see if that works out. I apparently did, uh, did not give enough lead on the Yamato though. Uh, I don't know if they weren't quite going full speed or if they were 
bleeding speed from maneuvering in a turn, but uh, yeah, they just weren't enough. Uh, they weren't far forward enough, so with a bit more lead they might have hit as well, but uh, sadly that's not going to be the case. So I got one into the Alabama who has uh, flooded and repaired that flooding, so if they get set on fire now they'll burn for a bit. And as the torps reload so quickly, here we are again with yet more going in their direction. And I think this is even without the benefit of either Adrenaline Rush or uh, the Torp Reload skill, I can't remember what it's called now. The base reload is just very, very good. And if you get Adrenaline Rush on, uh, you can make it even better, of course. So there's another two hits, another chunk of damage, and now the Alabama is flooding. You actually get quite a nice visual indicator these days with the flashing lights and the sprays of water. But sadly, he does not live enough to die from my flooding. The Yamato just finishes him off. And that Yamato has just been sitting there bow tanking the entire time. So uh, if I had run away, I think they'd, they'd have maybe been in a slightly worse position than they were because the Kigero would have had a bit more of a free reign, but not that much more of a free reign. Our carrier was still keeping them spotted after all. So this is the game pretty much, this is the last couple of enemy ships in front of us and uh, there's also another, what is that, another Yamato? I think so, uh, that's uh, trying to head south from the bay, but yeah they're not going to last too much longer, they've got bombers incoming. This is basically me having spent the entire time tied down to this one cap, but you know in the end I got the cap, I helped not make this as maybe as static as it could have been and at this stage having definitively won this you know I decided to just throw caution to the wind be a bit reckless see how well I could dodge and uh, it, although it's probably not recommended trying to hit a Zhao at this range I did, did get a bit more damage out of it. Of course from this point the only thing that would be crazier than trying to engage the Zhao from close range would be to try and engage the Yamato from close range I definitely don't have the hit points, or really even the time to rush him to drop torps in the same way I did from the, uh, the Monarch from the previous replay, but I might still get a bit more damage out with my guns, and provided he doesn't nuke me with his AP shells, well, I might even survive the match. And the reason why, well, you've seen how much damage he's taking from other sources, including our Yamato. The reason why I wouldn't have time is that, basically. He was sailing very broadside to our Yamato, and so if he'd been higher health, maybe it would have been worth me trying to rush in and get more torp hits. But as it was, no, they were just giving all their health away to other people in a, a very unfair fashion, I feel, but never mind. So this one, not as much damage, but actually better score than last time. 1969 base XP, which put me third on the team, and the Yamato that was actually behind me for most of the match. Not that far behind the cap, though. It's not like they were firing from uh, half the map away when I say that. Uh, they did very well for themselves and getting second place, so... That was not a comfortable role for Lotariba, trying to play that support boat role, because it's not really built for that. It's a very selfish ship. It wants to go and do its own thing. You can't smoke teammates. You can't really go in for caps unless you've got substantial support, as I had there from both the Yamato and the Carrier. So there are a lot of times when you're just not going to have the ideal circumstances, and at that point Litteribla starts to struggle, because it wants to do its own thing rather than do the thing that you want it to do. And this is why it's not a great ship, because that set of circumstances where it really does shine is a bit more limited than most other tier 8 destroyers. It doesn't have the utility that a lot of the other tier 8 destroyers do. So it's far from unplayable. I don't want anybody to think that I'm being hyperbolic and saying, oh, it's the worst ship ever, and because it's not OP, therefore it's rubbish. It's not unplayable, you can have decent matches in it, but there are a lot of hurdles to overcome to have those decent matches. And it certainly doesn't suit a player like me. It absolutely doesn't. So hopefully you've found these, uh, these replays, this, this gameplay instructive. 
informational, dare I say, maybe even a bit entertaining. And if you have, you can do all the usual things down under the video. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.